Hey guys, in this video, we will start looking at our aggregate function, starting with the average function. So to take an average of the rows or of values in rows, we would need some numerical values that would not be IDs. So for this example, and well, we would probably eventually have to add it anyway, we will be adding a column to our enrollments table for grades. So we would be adding grades to the enrollments table because this is where we see that a particular student took a particular class. So the best place to put the grade for this student's performance in said class would be in the same table where we know that they took that class. So I'm going to modify the enrollments table, put in a grades column and put in some dummy data and then we can proceed. So to add an, an, a column to an existing table, we'll just hover over that table's name in the design viewer, click that wrench in the middle, which will bring up our designer and then we can just add that new column. All right, so in adding this new column, I am calling it grade, I'm setting it as a float and I'm setting it as nullable. So sometimes you, when you're adding a row, a new column, sorry, after having a few records, if you are not careful with setting it ver null versus not nullable, you might run into some design flaw and problem because if it's not nullable and you already have 100 records, then you're going to be attempting to insert a new column that shouldn't be null against 100 existing columns with no preset data. So you want to be very careful with that. Maybe you want to start off as null, fill in the, the records retroactively, and then make it not null going forward. So for now, I'll just set it to be nullable. And having made that change, I'll just click apply. And then it will run an alter table statement, which is the SQL statement that is used to modify a table, like when you're adding a column or you're adding a key retroactively or doing some operation that is morphing the, the structure of your table. So I'll just go ahead and click apply. And that was successful. And I'll just go back to my design viewer and execute once again. And then I'll just add a few grades here. All right, so we've added some grades and having done all of that, I'll just click apply and allow it to run that update command, setting the grades where necessary. And that was successful. And now we have some data against which we can do a few computations. Now we have a, our task ahead of us. We were asked to bring back the average grades per course. Now, once again, process of elimination. We know that we need courses, so I can select, well, actually, let's start with enrollments because it's average grade per course. So enrollments is what really has the grades. So let's start with enrollments, select, and I'll say star from enrollments, all right? And let me just add my use school underscore DB. So that is our first statement. And we can execute that and we see that we're bringing back all enrollments. Now we wanted to know the average grade per course. Based on that objective, I really don't need the course. Well, I need the course name because just seeing I have class ID here. I don't know what course is associated with the class ID five. So that means I'm going to have to inner join my classes table. So I'll just write that quick and I'll start using my aliases so en for enrollments and cl for classes and then cl dot id must be equal to en dot class underscore id and when I execute this then I bring back more details more numbers though but I'm really interested in maybe the course name so I'm going to have to say I want whichever whichever course has the ID of five. Wait, let me let me take a second to look at these IDs because this is now confusing because you see here where we have ID and we have ID. All right, yeah, so we're back on track. So our course's ID here, so our class's ID here is being interjoined on the class ID here. So that's why we have five, 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 five. 
555 and 6 and 1. But then we're really interested in the courses because we want to see the name of the course as well as the average grade. So I'm just going to duplicate this line and change this out to courses. And I'm going to call this one CO. And I'm going to say CO.ID or well, that would be course ID. And there is the IntelliSense helping me along. So let me just do that quickly. So that's course ID being equal to CL dot courses ID. All right. And then once we do that, then we can bring back more details. And then we see here, internet authoring is a very popular course this term. And we have website development and data mining. Now, the objective, once again, is to bring back the average grades per course, which means that I want to see one row saying internet authoring and the average grade for that course. And I want to see one row with website development and one row with data mining. Granted, we only have one row of those right now, but essentially we shouldn't be seeing this many instances of internet authoring by the end of this query. So now I just focus on all of the columns that I know I want back. So I want back the course title, which in this case would be co.title. And I also want back, and I'll just space those out so we can see exactly what's happening here. And I also want back my grade, which would be en.grade. All right, and then when I select once again, now I'm seeing that these are the grades for internet authoring and the other courses. But once again, this should all be one value, which should represent the average grade for that class. And well, the average for this would be 87 and the average for this would be 34. Now, if you're a C++ developer or any other type of developer, you would probably go into a for loop or a while loop mode where you'd write a statement for this. But in SQL, they gave us a command because you can see where it's not quite like the other languages. So we actually have the opportunity to use a function AVG and wrap that grade value inside AVG. And AVG will say, I want the average for whatever comes in here. So when we take a look at the results set, we see that we're only getting back one course with some average value, but we had three courses and we should have at least three rows. And the reason for this is that the function AVG is not functioning properly because we are not grouping by. So I'm going to add a group by, and once again, we will now group by whatever we're selecting. But in this case, because we're also selecting a value that we're putting in the aggregate function AVG, we won't include this one in our group by. So when we're using one of these functions, we don't include that column in our group by. And then if I execute this once again, then we see better values coming back where we see internet authoring with its real average and website development with those values. Of course, if we had more values for website development and data mining, then we would get different values than the one grade that is available to us. But otherwise, that is how our AVG function works. As always, we can beautify our columns by adding our aliases and we can say course title and course average or average grade. And then we re-execute and there we have our report which we can then export and share with our superiors. Thanks for viewing and have fun with that.